Welcome to the New Trust Economy, where your hosts, Blockchain 101 author and founder of Rise Housing, Monica Profit, and Inc. innovation columnist and brand casting strategist, Tracy Hazard, explore all things blockchain, ICO ventures, and cryptocurrency. Each week, they explore businesses, applications, and venture built on blockchain or cryptocurrency and address issues like women and diversity in tech, trust and distrust, and the economics of access and value. We would like to remind our listeners that investing in disruptive tech, ICOs, and cryptocurrency is speculative in nature and involves substantial risk of loss. We encourage you to invest carefully and do your due diligence first. Now, here are your hosts, Monica Profit and Tracy Hazard. Hello and welcome to the New Trust Economy. I'm Monica Profit and I'm here with Todd Croslin, the CEO and founder of CoinZoom. Thank you so much for joining us, Todd. Thank you, Monica. Pleasure to be here. This is great. Where are you joining us from? Is it? Uh, I think that we're in different time zones at this point. Is that right? I'm based. Yes. In so we're we're in Salt Lake City. And is your whole company based in Salt Lake City, or are you a distributed team? Well, distributed. So we have an office in uh, Palo Alto, an office in uh, Sydney, Australia, Dublin, Ireland. Uh, we we have, we have a small office in Auckland, New Zealand, as well. That's fantastic. And your team is how big? It sounds like that's a lot of offices to be maintaining from Solid. So there's about 15. Okay, 15 15. people on about five different sites. That's exciting. Yes. So in terms of your team, uh, what positions do they typically fill? What does it look like to be running a CoinZoom operation? So uh, I'll back up a little bit. Uh, So our experience, Monica, has been in the uh, the fintech space uh, and the, the, the global uh, regulated uh, brokerage firm space for the last two decades. So I founded a company back in 2001 called Interbank FX. So we were a, a futures and commission merchant, um, futures commodities broker registered in the U.S., registered in Australia, and we had uh, offices in Sydney, uh, Beijing, Hong Kong, Seoul, London, U.S., uh, and we were transacting about uh, $80 billion a month at our peak. Uh, when I sold the firm to a big brokerage firm out of Tokyo, Japan. And, and since selling the firm, we, we've started a, a venture fund, CoinZoom Ventures and CoinZoom Securities, which is a registered broker dealer with the SEC and FINRA. And now we're, we're getting ready to launch CoinZoom, which is a U.S. regulated digital currency exchange. Uh, and then if you, as you talk about teams, so uh, we've, we kind of gathered the band back together that we had from Interbank FX. So uh, our old CTO, who isn't old, but uh, yeah, he's, jo- he's joined CoinZoom as, uh, um, on the team, uh, Paxton Powers, our, our head uh, chief uh, software architect that built our matching engine and our exchange with Interbank, he has joined, and that's James Olson. And, um, then we have head of trading. We have uh, our, another chief software architect that came from from Interbank. So we kind of gathered the best talent that we had at our, our free previous brokerage firm to bring them back into uh, CoinZoom, and then um, getting ready to launch what we believe is a night is a differentiated you know exchange and a product for you know the global cryptocurrency space. That's fantastic. Are you doing, um, in terms of the global cryptocurrency space, of course, having five different locations is going to be very helpful. Are you doing any asset-backed securities? So, so right now, um, uh, with CoinZoom, so it's a traditional uh, um, exchange for trading Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera. So we, we have a, an affiliated company, a sister company called CoinZoom Securities, which is a registered broker dealer. Um, and, and so we were looking at doing uh, potentially asset backed securities, uh, digital assets with our broker dealer. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a wall between the two. One's the broker dealer that trades in securities and, and the other is um, CoinZoom, which builds in uh, cryptocurrency assets. That are not asset backed. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like it's pretty typical for the U.S. and for most uh, industrialized countries in those markets that touch those users. So, uh, yeah. But 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 I guess asset backed asset backed could be so we'll be trading. uh, 
I think there's five different stable coins that we'll be trading. And so th those are asset backed, a stable coin. So USDC, uh, Tether, True USD. So there, uh, we do have asset backed uh, cryptocurrencies as well that are, that are traditional, um, you know, fiat backed. Currencies. Yes. Yeah. That's fantastic. So how did you get into cryptocurrency to begin with? So really, uh, as you know, the whole world, you know, the last couple of years have been, you know, trading, you know, buying and selling, you know, crypto. And we've seen, you know, the advent of, you know, lots and lots of exchanges around the world. Uh, we, we traded at several exchanges and there were just a lot of pinpoint, you know, pain points that we saw, like onboarding was difficult. Uh, a lot of exchanges, you couldn't use fiat currencies to fund your account. Um, so lots of pain points. And we, we got thinking as a team, if we could just offer the same product and services that we had at, at Interbank, uh, we could get an, a you know, nice market share. So we really focused on the, the KYC and the AML, the onboarding process. So we have a, a nice frictionless process that takes about 60 seconds to go through KYC and AML to get your account approved. You know, once your account's approved, um, then you're able to fund your account with, you know, ACH wires or, you know, Visa, MasterCard, you know, union pay debit cards. Uh, so we have a nice fiat on-ramp for customers to fund their account. And then, you know, one of the things that we had at, at Interbank was a uh, Interbank FX um, Visa debit card. So customers could access the, their trading accounts with the, um, with the debit cards and and so and so find your own kyc yourselves or did you use a third-party vendor to get your KYC? We, we use a third we use a third-party company that does that yeah there are some really great people in the space coming up yes so as a good fiat on-ramp that's fantastic can you talk a little bit about um your the ways in which your team realized those pain points and how they addressed getting over them in terms of like say fiat on-ramp because i think most people when they think about you know how do i get my a fiat on-ramp for anybody out there listening is you know a way to get your us dollars or real currency that's in the normal marketplace into crypto so you can trade there and engage in ethereum or how do you even buy bitcoin and most people just use coinbase to do that but what you're yeah. saying is you've got another way in addition to coinbase that allows people to use their us dollars and fund their accounts is that right yeah and it's and it's cheaper. Um, I think Coinbase charges uh, if you use your your Visa, Mastercard, you know your debit card to fund your account. I think they charge four percent. Yeah. Um, and so uh, and there's only maybe a half dozen you know exchanges in the world that allow you to use Visa, Mastercard for funding, and we're we're one of the the half dozen or so. And ours is two point nine nine percent. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're kind of the low cost leader as far as funding your account with fiat. And then um, we, we have a great solution when you want to, you know, spend the crypto in your account, you can use the CoinZoom Visa debit card uh, to spend that as well. That's fantastic. And how long have you been building this? This sounds like a pretty robust system. Yeah, so it's been about a year and a half. Uh, a, a big part of, you know, getting the fiat, you know, on ramp and off ramp with Visa uh, is, you know, the regulatory approvals. And so we've been going through, you know, eat, you know, all of the different, you know, 50 states getting our money transmitter license. So we are a registered money services business in all 50 states and uh, territories. And then we have our, we're a registered money transmitter and we're available for trading now in 46 states. So we just have uh, about four states left to get our money transmitter licenses, but we we're hopefully that we'll have the last four states by um, end of January. That's fantastic. And, that is really fast. And how long have you been at this trying to get these uh, state by state approved? It's been about a year and a half. Yeah. Sense. And so a, a part of that, um, you know, getting uh, the regulatory approvals from the different states, that was key to getting uh, banking relationships and able to uh, offer the fiat on ramp for customers. And so, you know, with, with the regulation came the opportunity to do the fiat on-ramp. And then, you know, as we got licensed, then we were able to uh, uh, sign this partnership with Visa. So we're, we're an approved program manager with Visa to issue our, our own debit cards to customers uh, where they can, you know, spend their crypto easily, you know, at any 
merchant around the world that accepts Visa. So I've only really known, I think one of the first uh, movers in that space was BitPay. Is that similar to like what you're doing? Uh, it's, it's somewhat similar. I believe theirs is, you know, more, uh, uh, a little more friction where you have to convert your Ethereum to USD. And then, uh, then once you have converted it, then you can spend your USD. So, so ours is, you know, on demand. So if you go to an ATM or you go to Starbucks, uh, and you have your coins and visa card, you can pre-select that I want to spend out of my Ethereum wallet. And when you go into a Starbucks and say it's $20, uh, we, we get a message through the visa rails uh, to approve a $20 transaction. As long as you have $20 in your Ethereum wallet, as far as USD value, we approve the transaction. And then we do a market order on an exchange for $20. So ours is, it's, it's real time. Uh, and I, I think the fees as well, we have, I think, some of the lowest fees in the, in the world as far as people that use their, uh, that want to use the CoinZoom uh, debit card. And yeah, what are the fees for using CoinZoom debit card? So right now, it's basically just the transaction uh, uh, charge when you sell your crypto. So it's, if you're, you know, there's a maker fee or a taker fee. Uh, the, the taker fee um, is 0.26%. Uh, so it's about a quarter of a percent uh, when you do your transaction versus, uh, you know, other cards around the world. It's it's one and a half to two and a half percent uh, fee that they charge. That's great. And what is the a maker fee? So the maker fee is 0. 0.2. So on either the, side, it's 0. 0.26 and 0. 0.2. So you end up with about a half a percent. Well, yeah, no. So it's uh, uh, if you're if you're doing a transaction with your visa card, you'll just pay one of the fees. Uh -huh. So it would be the taker fee, uh -huh. which would be like a market order. And so it would be the 0.26%. That's great. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how you came upon your transaction fees and what this means to a normal user? Like what would they expect? What would their normal um, experience be if they didn't use your product versus how it would be easier with your product? Sure. So. Um, you know, there's there's some exchanges out there that that say you know commission free trading, right? But they charge a a three percent spread for your your market. So right. if um, if you're charging a three percent spread on say Bitcoin at at seventy three hundred dollars, that's like a two hundred and ten dollar spread. So they they call it commission free, but you're really paying a really you're really paying a three percent commission. And so we've looked at the different models and, and as we competed with our former brokerage firm, there were a lot of um, uh, probably misleading, you know, you know, commission free type experience. But when you include, you know, a, a two or three percent spread, you're really paying a, a two or three percent commission. So we wanted to be to, to be transparent about our, our pricing and have one of the, the lowest uh, commission rates, you know, in the world for customers to trade. And so we, you know, our, our goal is to get, you know, retail traders, institutions, high frequency traders, and to offer, you know, um, great pricing, deep liquidity, and, and, and good commission structures so that they can, you know, trade and be successful. Now, do you do trades for, um, can you, can anyone get on this or is this just for accredited investors? How does this work uh, in, in terms of just the average retail person? So, so it's, it's open worldwide. Uh, so for, for everybody. Um, so we're, we're limited with, you know, there's a handful of countries, the OFAC countries, yep. you know, Iran, Iraq, North Korea, Cuba. There's a handful of countries that we can't accept customers. But other than that, it's, it's a broad net that we're casting for you know retail and institutional traders globally that's fantastic um so um gosh i have there are so many directions that this has already gone i was like wondering about how the visa card actually worked it sounds like it's very simple if someone is to go to coinzoom.com is that where they would download or would they use their app is there an app on their phone or what is the process for a normal person to just go this sounds great i want to find out more sure so they would go um uh they would go to the website, uh, you know, register for an account. 
uh, when, when you register for an account and the KYC and AML is complete, and that's about 60 seconds, uh, you're issued a virtual debit card on, on your phone or on your desktop. And then you can order a, a physical card if you want as well. Does that so, cost anything? Uh, so it's $10 if you want to order a physical card just to cover, you know, shipping and handling with the, our, our, our visa supplier. So. Mm -hmm. And that sounds amazing. Do you, did you kind of decide, you know, was there a big why behind this? It sounds like you've been involved in trading and securities as well as cryptocurrency for a long time. Do you have a driving like bigger why behind what you're is, is kind of navigating you or a North star in your, in your you know, navigation plan? Well, we're, we're, we're looking at, um, you know, so we have something also called zoom me, which is like Venmo and, but zoom me. So I can, I can send you, um, USD uh, or, or crypto for free and it's instant. And so we, we really want, you know, we looked at the different services that we had at our, our previous brokerage firm. We, we've, we've, we've added those services plus, you know, some of the unique, uh, you know, FinTech experiences that the customers are used to. So we, we think that globally, you know, if you have friends in Germany or, or, or family, you can use the Zoom me on your app and you can send them, you know, USD or crypto instantly for free. So we think that there's a, there's a lot of use cases for using our app or, or using our technology. You can buy and sell crypto. You can send crypto for free. Um, you can send fiat for free. Um, yeah, and so, features, but is there like an overarching kind of why that kind of drove you when you looked at this? Is there a, is there a purpose behind this or a meaning that it has for you? And I know as a founder, it can be very difficult to keep going day after day when you have to wake up and get through the next fire and put it out. But sure. you know that you're kind of aiming towards a larger, a larger picture, you know, that you want to see solved or done in the world. How does that fit into your, your schema? Well, I think, uh, I think it comes back to, uh, uh, my my drive as a entrepreneur so for better or worse i've never applied for a job since college i've i've started i started a company and you know uh we we own several businesses now and this is one that we're particularly excited about and we we think that you know in in the next you know 18 or 24 months we could be a top 10 exchange in the world and and we, we're we're looking at not only just cryptocurrency trading, but offering other products and services for, for customers to, um, to really differentiate ourselves from, from other exchanges and, and, and complement what we're doing, you know, like what PayPal does or what Venmo does. Yeah. We're, we're incorporating all of these products and services into something that we think that will be, you know, meaningful and exciting for, for users globally. That's fantastic. Um, so, I mean, that big why is actually enormous when you think about what blockchain is doing for the world. It's like, you know, a complete revolution of, of the financial world, basically. Do you have any, as you said, you've always been, you're a serial entrepreneur, it's been that way your whole life. Was there something that you studied in school that sort of led you to that? I mean, I feel as though if I had been taught anything about being an entrepreneur when I was in college, it would have been the beginning of a constructive conversation rather than a deconstructive. I was deep in the humanities and social sciences. I learned all about what was wrong in the world and how systems were not good for everybody and it was unequitable. And I didn't find any great big solutions other than, you know, there's blood on all of our hands if we're participating in the global marketplace, which we can't avoid doing. So I didn't see that I could go out and make better systems for a long time. And uh, that just wasn't taught. So how did you end up catching this bug? Was it something you were taught or an exposure that you had early in your college years? I think, um, yeah, so I, I went to school in, in Germany um, wow. during uh, my university days. And I, I met a man that owned a BMW dealership. And when I got back from, uh, from uh, school over in Germany, he he uh, sent me a letter and says, you know, why don't you sell cars for me in the U S and so, and so during college I started to sell, you know, BMWs in the U S they were, they were gray market cars. We had to do the, the DOT and the EPA conversion and put on catalytic converters. And so I kind of got that bug, I think early on during college and, and actually made a lot of money during college, you know, selling cars. And, but then, 
but then from that, you know, experience, it just drove me to want to can continue to try and innovate and do different things. And, and, and I mean, uh, while you were busy making a career for yourself without even having a degree, what did you end up getting your degree in? Finance. Finance. Well, that makes yeah. sense. That, that fits right in. Yeah. yeah. I, I have one kind of big question and I'm sure it's on your mind as well. And, and I, I always want to ask people that are doing really innovative things that touch a retail investor that aren't super specific, that don't only drive into the, the tech world only and, and serve at a protocol level, but things, people that are serving on the applications level that really touch everyone and that are consumable by normal people. What does mass adoption really look like in your vision of the future? So I, I think that, um, uh, cause right now, you know, people can buy Ethereum or Ripple or, or Dash or Bitcoin. And, and until now, what, what can you really do with it? Uh, you know, some people have lost their Bitcoin. So maybe there's three or 4 million Bitcoin that have been lost. You know, they lost a thumb drive, their laptop died. And so what, what can you do with it? So we really want to be the first step of with with the CoinZoom Visa card, with with being able to you know go to Starbucks, you know go on Amazon, um, you know spend your Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, etc. in real time, and then you know just like you know a Venmo experience, if you're if you're at dinner, you you can you can Zoom me, you know your your friends either you know U.S. dollars instantly or you can you know fractionally send them some ripple for their pizza or so we, we think that incorporating uh current technology and and making um you know cryptocurrencies you know usable in the real world that's that's what we see you know mass adoption starting to look like that's fantastic. That's what I think everybody is really hoping for. They can, they can build something that people can understand and grab onto and, and use. I always, I use the cousins test personally. I'm very close with my cousins in Texas. They do nothing in technology. They're in, you know, as far away from technology as you can imagine, at least in terms of computer software technology and fintech. They're in, you know, oil and gas and things, yeah. that, you know, Southern, South Texas, they're very common yeah. industries. But when I can explain it to them and they don't get that fatigued look on their face, like I still don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. If I can explain it to them, then I know it's, it's viable as a concept and it's viable as an interface. If they don't yeah. get it, then, you know, they're, they're people that aren't, they're not out to try to solve the world and change the world through Bitcoin or blockchain or anything. They're just looking to solve normal problems. And if I go, here's a normal problem and here's a solution. If they get it, then I feel like, oh, then it works. And what you've got yeah. is something that everybody understands. Having that Visa emblem even and the debit card functionality is fantastic. That's just the first on-ramp. Is that also, it's an off-ramp in terms of spending Ethereum and Bitcoin directly as well. Have you, yes. Um, do, so as a debit card, are you using this, and people can use it at ATMs as well? Yes. So any, in, so any ATM in the world that accepts Visa. That is great. That's yeah. so exciting because I know there are some um, Bitcoin ATMs that are, um, that are only really for uh, for doing Bitcoin fiat transactions. And that can be really, yeah. really clunky for a lot of users. So this yes. is a really exciting innovation. Um, do you have anything else that you'd like to touch on before we, before we sign off? This is just fantastic. And I feel like it's going to be easy to send people lots of the links that you've included and, um, and send people to your, to your wonderful and almost ubiquitous <laughs> um, <laughs> opportunity to. Well, thank you. No, I, I think, you know, we're, we're excited about uh, the future uh, and, and like you said, you know, your, your friends or relatives in Texas, you know, those that have experienced sending, you know, Ethereum across the world, you're not going through the Fed wire system uh, and how easy and inexpensive it is. Uh, I think, you know, marrying, you know, some of the legacy technology, say with Visa and our partnership with Visa and being able to make this, you know, uh, usable for, for the masses is, is what we're really excited about. That is great. Do you have any um, upcoming innovations or launches that are going to be, you know, coming out in the next six months that you'd like to give us a teaser about? Sure. So, so the exchange is going live this month, actually. Uh, and so uh, towards the end of December, you know, we're onboarding customers doing live trading right now. We have about um, 40 coins that we'll be supporting. Uh, so there's the, you know, the top 15 or so 
uh, coins plus about 25 of the of the high, most highly traded altcoins as well. So That's we'll great. we'll have a nice uh, variety of coins for customers to trade. And then you know if if you know you 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 have a stash of Ripple that you have over time, you can also start spending that on your on your debit card too. That's fantastic. Um, wow. Well, I think that this is, this is just going to be, uh, it's nice to see that we're going to have other alternatives to Coinbase for starters. And we're going to see this. I've always predicted we would have a race to the bottom in terms of transaction fees and um, not completely a race, but it can't, it, the kind of transaction fees that we were dealing with in the early days, even a, a couple of years ago, just, they are not sustainable. It was like the Correct. early first mover greed. And I'm so glad to see further, you know, innovation and disruption there because it needs yeah. to happen. And if we're yeah. going to get mass adoption, we can't be paying insane fees. It's a really exciting time. Yeah. One more question, because I know you guys have done some things on the security side. This is really just a self-serving question because yeah. real estate backed securities and uh, I'm, I'm doing tokenization of real estate debt and equity. Yeah. So I have to ask you. Um, have you done anything that, you know, that you think is going to open up that market in the, in the foreseeable, I don't know, 12 to 18 month future for secondary trading of uh, real estate or asset backed securities in the U.S.? Um, so, so with CoinZoom, we're, we're working on a, a really uh, high tech frictionless experience for customers to onboard and, um, and you know, tra really. and offboard and trade in their account. When when you when you add securities to the equation, so asset backed securities, real estate, you're you're adding a significant amount of friction to that experience. And and so it, it depends on you know how that security or digital security was created. Uh, is it a, a 506C, a 506B? Right. Uh, is it a Reg A plus? Um, and then uh, certain certain assets will only be available for accredited investors versus you know non-accredited investors, and so if it's only for accredited investors, they have to get an affidavit from their CPA or or a wealth manager that they're an accredited investor. So, talk about significant friction. Right. Um, so I think that's the that's the issue. Uh, I mean, we're interested in that space. You know, we have our broker dealer for CoinZoom Securities. Would, would that uh, be but, only really be interested in securities that were issued under Reg A plus versus Reg D? So, you know, so Reg A plus, so, but then there's friction for the issuer yeah. uh, with Reg A plus. And, and then there's less friction for the, for the uh, customer because they don't have to be accredited. Uh, but then you have a limit of, you know, 50 million per year that you can raise in Reg A plus. And so we think it's really interesting. We, we, we have a draft, you know, ATS application that we we've, we've gone through with FINRA and the SEC on. Um, but we're, we're looking at onboarding millions of customers with CoinZoom. And that's probably not an option to onboard millions of customers with CoinZoom securities. Right. Uh, just be just with the regulatory uh, threshold that, that we would need. And being a global uh, company, are you are you seeing that there is easier framework in other in other countries? For example, my co my co company, Rise Markets, we are doing business in the Bahamas, and we're finding that the Securities Exchange Commission equivalent there, the Securities Commission they call it, is has been a lot more um, amenable to letters of no action, to reviewing and and approving. Uh, different offerings that would that really get tied up in what, what you're saying friction and a, a really difficult regulatory process yeah. in the state. Have you found that those are more attractive markets to be considering as CoinZoom expands as a global brand and as a global marketplace? Yes. So I think uh, you know it definitely is. Um, so we've also registered with ASIC in Australia as a digital currency exchange, and so we we we're regulated outside of the U.S. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's kind of a gray area, you know, so globally, you know, and so, and I, and I think the SEC has taken a measured approach. I mean, they haven't, they haven't brought, you know, a complete hammer down on this movement. So they want to, they don't want to stifle innovation that they've been concerned about some of these crazy ICOs that have taken place. Right. And, and so, and there's been, there's been actions 
taken against those firms. Uh, but I think we're getting more and more um, clarity, you know, uh, it's not crystal clear, but we're getting more clarity on the assets that we can list in the U.S. versus outside of the U.S. Um, but we, we think that the U.S. is is an important place to, you know, to stake our company. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and there's, there's firms that, you know, they're, they're regulated in some island off of Africa that I've never heard of. And oh. so they're really not regulated. But I, I think um, if, if you want the fiat on ramp and, and uh, you want these other, you know, things that we have with Visa, you, you need to be, you know, a regulated entity with, with, a, with a reputable jurisdiction. So that's, it's more expensive, but I think it, it will pay dividends in the long run. Absolutely. I mean, the, the U.S. market is what everybody, you know, across the globe is really hoping to tap. So your yeah. ability to bring people to that is, is huge. It's enormous. What you have brought to the crypto community and the larger community to, to introduce them to crypto has been a, a, a true contribution, I believe. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So thank you so much, Todd. I, I really appreciate you taking the time. Is there anything else you'd like to touch on before we get going? Um, no, that's, like that's great, so Monica. We've been helpful. No, we appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. Thank you. Absolutely. And we will be keeping an eye out for your next, your next innovations. It sounds like there's so much still on the horizon as you guys grow rapidly. So um, again, I just want to say uh, this is Monica Profit at the New Trust Economy. I'm here with Todd Crossland and uh, we're signing off for this episode. We will catch you next time on the podcast. Thanks for listening. Thank you. You've been listening to The New Trust Economy. We'd love to hear your comments on today's show, as well as suggestions for future topics and guests. Visit us online at newtrusteconomy.com or on social at newtrusteconomy. Thanks for exploring The New Trust Economy with us.